Hi, I'm Richard Thornton, and I'd like to thank you for joining me on this podcast series where we will be talking about investing in private mortgage notes. The intention is to have about 10 of these videos that you can watch uh, all at once or uh, over several days, as you would like. We will be discussing uh, the investment of private mortgage notes. So hopefully uh, you will be able to better decide if you'd like to invest in mortgage notes or not. In this first one, uh, we'll be talking a little bit about the basics of mortgage notes. The typical yields you can expect, uh, the type of notes that are out there, and lay some basic general guidelines um, for the next um, of these series. A little bit of background on myself. Um, I'm Richard Thornton, as you know, uh, and um, I've been in real estate for about 30 years. In the mid-80s, I started a mortgage banking firm with an associate, commercial, and we lent nationwide. And at the time of its sale, uh, in the early 2000s, we had about an $8 billion portfolio. After that, I invested in large senior housing projects nationwide with a number of my clients. And then when the uh, recession came along, or before the recession came along, I became a um, hard money lender. And post-recession, decided that it was uh, a good time to get into flipping houses and did 18 of those. And after that, uh, as part of that, I actually decided that it was uh, um, very interesting to become a private mortgage lender uh, and purchase mortgage notes. So that's what I've been doing. And um, I really enjoy it, find it very profitable, and uh, enjoy helping other people um, gain profits with that also. So let's talk about why somebody would want to buy a mortgage note. Mortgage notes provide stable, consistent income that's long-term, long-term being usually 10 years or more. Uh, most of the mortgages that we buy um, are 30-year mortgages. They are seasoned mortgages, meaning that the buyers or the borrowers have been paying for uh, anywhere from two to four years. So they have a good payment history that's consistent. And if you invest in one of these, um, you'll get a return that can be tax-free if you invested with it, if you invested in it in a self-directed IRA. And uh, if you used a Roth IRA, you'll never pay taxes on it, uh, even after you cash it in your, um, your proceeds at the, the end of the day. So these are great investments for people's retirement accounts. Uh, if you want to save money for your child going to school or have any other reason why you'd like to get a good return. Um, returns on the type of product that we're talking here um, being loans that are first trust liens. We're not talking about seconds or anything like that. Um, that uh, have a good security risk, meaning that you have uh, the property as collateral, are usually somewhere in the 6 to 8 percent. Um, realm. Uh, you can buy a whole loan. So if you wanted to buy, let's say, 27 years, um, you could do that. Or you can buy uh, what's called a partial, which is just the first, say, 10 years. And we'll talk a, a whole lot more about that later. So as I just mentioned, um, t these are typically 10 to 12 year uh, investments. Um, some people like to just buy them and put them away. It's called uh, set it and forget it. Uh, and um, that's uh, perfectly fine too. A typical investment size is usually twenty to fifty thousand dollars. Most of the mortgages that we buy are in homes throughout the Midwest. Uh, I happen to be based here in the San Francisco Bay Area where for a little um, two-bedroom, uh, one-bath house, you can spend anywhere from seven hundred to a million dollars, seven hundred thousand, I'm sorry, to a million dollars. Outside of Indianapolis, um, Akron, St. Louis, places like that, uh, you can buy that very same house built in the 1950s, uh, cute as a button quite often, uh, for probably fifty or sixty thousand dollars. Um, if the borrower puts down $10,000 and tries to get a $40,000 mortgage, quite often they can't. It's not because they don't have good 
credit, a good credit rating, it's simply because the loan is too small and a lot of banks can't uh, or don't want to um, make loans that small because they're inefficient. Uh, federal guidelines restrict the amount of fees that can be charged uh, on a mortgage note that size, and therefore they say it's just not worth it. There are some that uh, do grant loans that size, but quite often um, they're difficult to find. So a borrower may, or I'm sorry, a seller may say to a potential buyer, look, uh, if you want to buy this house, give me a down payment of, say, $10,000 on a $50,000 house, and I will be your bank uh, and will draft a mortgage for $40,000. Um, then he or she collects the payments for 30 years or whatever the term, 10, 10 or 20 years, whatever term they decide upon. Quite often what happens is that uh, that seller who has taken back that note um, decides they want to do something else with the money. Either they find another investment that they want to make or they um, maybe want to take a vacation or send their child to school or any of a number of things uh, and decide to sell the loan. They can sell them to uh, a broker or, or an investor like me um, through, through various exchanges or I'm reaching out every day um, trying to contact different people like that to see if they will sell them to me directly. So uh, we have uh, our usual mortgages are twenty to $50,000. And that might be on a $100,000 to uh, $50,000 house. We're usually in the 50 to 60% um, range uh, for loan to value. So one of the aspects that is um, desirable about these loans is if in, for some reason the borrower does default, you've always got the home as collateral. And you have to ask yourself, well, if it was a $60,000 house and I have a $30,000 mortgage on it, or that's what my investment is anyway, could I, even in a slow market, probably mark the price of that house down to $30,000 and still recoup my investment? Um, the answer is usually yes. It might take you six months to sell the house. Um, you have to foreclose upon it, but at least it's more secure than, say, the stock market, where if you lose your money, you don't necessarily have any hope at all that you're going to get your investment back. So a lot of people like the fact that they can participate in real estate uh, and not have to put up with the three Ts. If you um, own a number of properties, and you are renting, um, you have to put up with uh, tenants, taxes, I'm sorry, tenants, turnover, and um, if you are renting to people, uh, you have to uh, put up with tenants, toilets, and turnover, which are referred to as the three T's, and a lot of people get tired of that. So, uh, this is a good way to invest and not have to uh, be that involved in real estate. There are also several other ways um, that um, you can benefit from these uh, in terms of having a safer investment, but we will talk uh, about that later. Um, if you decide you'd like to do something uh, immediately or have questions uh, immediately, uh, you can always feel free to call me. Uh, Richard Thornton at 510-918-9001, and I'll be glad to talk with you. Or you can watch the rest of the series and get more answers uh, to your questions. I'll see you in the next series. Bye-bye.